Hello, everybody. It's the City Matt Haven here today, and I wanted to talk to you guys about something. Uh, this has been getting brought up a little bit in uh, conversations on uh, Discord, watching some other streamers, and realizing that there's a lot of crew loadouts out there that not a lot of people can give good strategies towards. So I kind of wanted to stop and take some time out to help you guys with that. Other than that, let's go ahead and dive into this. Battle QE. All right, so I feel like a child each time I do that anymore. So, crews and everything else you guys do, let's say, for instance, we have a three-perk crew, or we have, like, a couple of perks on a crew. Something I want to talk about. There's always a good start-off build. If you are a pay-to-play player, and you're capable of pitching in money, and, um, you know, you can go in and do a couple of things, this won't apply as much to you as other things, but let's say that you are free to play, and you can't really afford to be able to jump in and go after, let's say, perks or even change around a few things. Primarily, one of the first perks that you want to go for is going to be Sixth Sense. In my opinion, this is one of the number one perks. Up next, Track Mechanic. That's going to be your secondary. And then Final, just to give you that extra little bit of a hand, Born Leader to improve all perk benefits across the board. Um, the way that I like to train my crews, primarily it's going to be using... Um, a toolbox, maybe some coded optics to help me give me that extra view range or, you know, a power terrain or ventilation or even vertical stabilizer since we're lacking a lot of perks. So primarily the power terrain on this tank, I would say is totally fine, but vertical um, for um, improved ventilation, I actually might swap this up for gun stabilizer because some tanks are going to have some really bad accuracy without snapshot, running gun, steady aim, or even, um, what is it? Run and gun. I think I already said that one. There's three, four of them in total. And there's one that I can never remember what it is. So we got steady aim, snapshot, run and gun. Is it just those three? I think it is just those three. Yeah, that's all we got. These three for accuracy. Primarily, though, depending on the accuracy of the tank, you will not need steady aim. But for instance, I think one of the best examples I can give would actually be the IS3A has an accuracy of 3.09 whenever it is moving, and in, for whatever reason we don't have the uh, during turret rotation inside of this list, you have to go to the website to be able to find that one, which is kind of uh, counterintuitive if you ask me. But one thing that I can say is during the time that you are training crews and you are getting things put together, it's not about if the tank has got this massive XP bonus that you can apply. Sometimes the XP bonus can make a real big difference whenever it comes out to earning a certain amount of experience every single time you play inside of a match. But the one factor is how do you perform inside this tank? Is this a tank that you feel like you would do absolutely amazing in every single time that you play inside of it that you can help maintain an average output of let's say your hit points every single match or even if it's just like being able to help assist with a little bit of damage and kind of park yourself into a position that's going to benefit the team prevent enemies from pushing in which is something to do with passive scouting just to get that extra view range out and get a little bit of extra assist training a crew starting off can be extremely difficult, especially since consumable-wise, consumables, if you're not using premium consumables, you're not competitive. I don't care what your argument is, it is a one-time use with the standards, and they do not regenerate, which the regenerating ones, 10,000 credits for 15 uses in a single match, kind of ridic ridiculous if you ask me. Other than that, let's go ahead and dive into some gameplay, and I have a couple more things to mention um, during the time that, you know, it's going to be all about crews, really, instead of a VK168, oh, 1P, things a freaking brick. I sneezed so hard just a moment ago, I thought I was going to have to walk away because I thought I was bleeding. Uh, no, I'm good. Um, but talking about it, one thing I can say is that during the time that you are training a crew, one of the best things that you can do is choose a heavy tank. Choose something that's got a lot of armor, a decent haul down fighter, has some decent mobility, decent terrain resistance, or something that you're comfortable in. The reason why I say this is because I like to use Toolbox because, let's say I have a brand new crew, I have one perk. I do not have access to Track Mechanic or anything else, so Toolbox is going to make a big difference. Sure, you're going to find yourself lacking on the view range part of things, but it's going to allow you to get up and on the move a lot faster. Along with that, having mobility and repair time increases your survivability chances because if you're capable of getting your tracks back on, getting tracked 
is probably one of the worst things that you, you can experience. Not to mention, there's a lot of people who will actually aim specifically, for instance, we're just going to zoom in. I'll aim right here just to break someone's turret with a high explosive round every once in a while, just to jam their turret and make them waste a repair kit. But if they already fired their gun and they're smart about it, they're actually going to wait for that turret to actually repair because they already fired their shot and their gun's not going to be ready for another 10 seconds, 8 seconds, and it's going to take 10 seconds to fully repair that turret. So running toolbox on top of that, you're not going to need to use your repair kit. You can use your repair kit for other things. A premium consumable is totally nice. You improve rations. Uh, it used to be chocolate for the Germans, but not no more. Um, once you hit your third perk, you know, the three basic perks, which is Sync, Sense, Track Mechanic, and Born Leader. Keep on playing the heavy tank until you unlock your fourth perk inside the game, because that fourth perk is the one that's going to be making all the difference. For instance, let's say that you put silent driving on it, and now you're going to be equipping it to a medium tank to help finish off the crew training on, on a uh, medium tank. So for instance, the best example of this I can give is, let's say you get your fourth perk, you get silent driving, now you're going to swap over to a Borask. Or you're going to swap over to a CS-53, which whenever you have that thing fully upgraded of 9 perks, it's got 269 still concealment. Well, actually, moving concealment. Nice. Super nice. But this tank right here is probably a horrible example to use. The VK-16801P. Uh, I just I just love it. It's big, it's derpy, and it's heavily armored. If you get it into the right position, it is definitely scary. Then, as you're working to unlock your fifth perk, you start to really develop your crew into a way that is going to be beneficial for the way that you're building it, depending on the tasks you want the crew to perform and everything else. Situational awareness is not required, but it does make a big difference whenever it comes into uh, getting assist damage and everything else. For instance, some of the best ways to train your crews might actually be to go after your heavies first, then rotate in the mediums, or even go after light tanks since light tanks actually benefit from no moving concealment. Their still concealment is their moving concealment. So switching over to a light tank to help finish off your crew training with camouflage expertise, essentially your light tank is fully stacked. Taking equipment, for instance, that's improved insulation, camouflage net, and um, coated optics, your light tank is essentially done and ready to go out on the battlefield. And if you do plan on switching it over to a light tank, you might even be able to skip out on track mechanic because your goal is to not be spotted, depending if you're going to be active scouting, or passive scouting. It just depends on how you're going to be playing the game. The fifth perk, on the other hand, let's say that you're inside of a heavy tank. Rapid loading can be beneficial, but is it needed? You know, for instance, my reload inside this tank, I'm not exactly super worried about how long it's going to take me to load. The number one thing that I'm worried about whenever I'm playing a tank like this is how much am I going to be able to survive against targets that are firing at me and, you know, how much I can angle my armor to try and maintain my hit points and uh, stay in the fight for longer periods of time. So, this, we're going to go in, we're going to put one in. He's going to try and pull on us. Let's actually give him our rear a little bit, but not entirely. Keep him backing up. We're going to go ahead and pull back up on the side here. Wait for that turret to angle. We can overmatch a side armor because it's only 42 millimeters. So, Arachi, it is a good tank. I did mention that it, it has a lot of savagery behind it, but one of the biggest problems is just that side armor at uh, 42, 120, it's going to overmatch it. Not to mention I weigh 168 tons. Sorry. But whenever you're training your crews and everything else, uh, heavy tanks, maybe your fourth perk if you're training a crew specifically for heavy tanks, off-road driving. And the reason why I say off-road driving is because that's going to provide a bigger benefit to relocating around the map. You're going to be moving a little bit faster than any other tank that is basically identical to you if they don't have off-road driving. For instance, the advantage can be a 3 kilometer acceleration difference in the start-off stages and slowly help maintain that speed depending on the terrain that you're traveling across. Or... You can go after situational awareness and get into a haul down position, pop over a ridge using optics to provide assist for the team. And really, the number one factor is about training a new crew. It's not a tank that has got a massive experience bonus on top of it, but in fact, the tank you enjoy. A tank you constantly perform good inside of. I chose the VK today to show off because this is a tank that has a lot of armor. You're not worried about your reload because your number one goal 
is simply to survive as long as you can to help rack up as much damage as you can get and to essentially provide anything that you're capable of getting your hands on. Sadly, oh, never mind, this game is still good. Down to the last second on the cap. Uh, honestly, I hate the fact that they change it towards instant cap if it gets underneath zero seconds, which does kind of suck, but it is what it is. We're going to put a shell down range, 432. We're going to angle our turret away. A little bit too much of an angle, but totally fine. Oh, oh, that's balanced. 518 from an artillery. Specifically, a tier 6 artillery into a tier 7 tank. 470 plus a track. Nice. No point in me pushing in. Big Top's going to go down. And that's it for this match. While sure, it's going to take a while to unlock perks and get everything set up, this will help you get the fundamentals and the start off. For instance, 9,790 experience gained because it was a good match. Don't get me wrong, if we were inside of like an experience bonus tank and we didn't use a premium commander, the experience gains probably would have been in the range of, let's say, 7,000 to 6,000 XP per game, which means to unlock your first perk, I do believe it's 38,000, then it jumps to 64,000, 34, 68, and then it slowly starts to get harder and harder and harder for each one that you're unlocking. But... Best way to do it for me is that I'll have a couple of tanks training, let's say, two crews. And as I unlock that sixth perk, and I have it to where it's kind of situated, where I want it to be inside of the classes that I want it to be in, I, tr I transfer it around according to the tanks that I want to play in during that time. Just like up next in this list, I'm going to be using the VK um, 7501K. There's a lot of VKs today. Honestly, this tank does not get a lot of love. I think this thing is absolutely amazing. And extremely powerful, but this one is equipped with optics, toolbox, and vertical stabilizer. As you guys can tell, I am not benefiting my reload in the slightest. This crew has got three perks, which means that it's going to be playing against us a little bit whenever it comes down to it. But six Sense, Track Mechanic, and Born Leader is really the three main perks that you're going to be needing on your heavy tanks. Going to module viewer, taking a look, reload is going to be 16.76 reload. Like, that's a pretty long reload for 490 alpha. But the goal is... Utilize the armor. Utilize everything that the tank has to offer as a heavy to help kind of just get that build up because you do get experience for every single time that you ricochet. And more than likely, I'm going to be changing out my crew real fast to a standard crew that we can take a look at the standard income rather than the 30% increased bonus. Ah, the mighty Zeus. And we're inside the VK going 30 on Helperon. This is going to be absolutely amazing. At least for top tier. Alrighty, action's about to start happening. Let's take a look here. So we are using vertical stabilizers on this as well to help kind of keep that little bit of a bloom that this tank does have, which honestly, the gun on this is really good. You have a lot of consistency. If you look there, the bloom's not too bad, especially if we come to a stop. It likes to zoom in at a decent rate. As I say that, we hit the farthest left point of our aiming reticle right there. And uh, what are we going to do here? Hello, t 2518 We got a decent angle on you. Don't feel too bad. Let's go to T-56. He can overmatch our Under Armour. I'm going to be a little bit careful here. That's a uh, APC. That's a premium. Let's go ahead and back off. We don't want to get stuck out right here. And even if we did get tracked right there, we still have really good repair speed because we're running track mechanic combined with the toolbox. So if it gets dropped off, we're still going to be looking at like a five second repair time, six second repair time. It's going to be extremely fast. I actually believe it is a five second repair time. I'll have to do some testing and find out the exact timings on that. More than likely, I'll be doing a community post on that once I do find out what it is to let everyone know. That way you guys can see the benefits between having general mechanic equipped, track mechanic, and a toolbox all at the same time, and then each one individually. But I wish we had a, a counter on how long it took tracks to get put back on. Like a little number icon like we have for our consumables whenever they're active and not active. Hello, Lance and C. It's nice to see those tanks. There we go. He's shooting APCR. Should have took a little bit more time to aim that into the hatch. Just going to be waiting patiently. That's all we need to do. No point in rocking the tank right here. Once we see detected pop up, though, we will take our shot down there. Angle out. Bring the gun in left. 
Honestly, it's a, it's a 105 and then a 90 from the uh, mutt, so I don't got to worry about the under armor on this being overmatched. Do you want to be a little bit careful there? So up to 2010 ricocheted. And then even with the reload being this bad, we still have a little bit of support behind us. It's also always nice to have support behind you. That way you're not super exposing yourself, but you're bringing out just enough to benefit the team. 505, good hit, plus 355 assisted. Once again, into the side, ricocheting off of the armor on top. So far going decent, but this doesn't, if it continues the way that it is, the uh, Skodas might take full control of the right side to my, I'm going to be a little bit careful here. Also, rocking your tank consistently, um, I, I got to say, there's somebody I completely agree with on this. You constantly reset your camouflage value each time that you rock your tank. So unless you're working your ridge line or your side scraping, trying to bait a shot, if you have the opportunity to sit still for long periods of time, I recommend to do it to um, keep your still concealment at maximum. That way you're not constantly worried about like someone pulling a corner, spotting you out, even though they're in the same exact tank as you. Not bad, just playing defensive on this corner is really all we got to do. Plus, I got to say, it's the first time in a while since I've seen my VK having this much fun instead of a matchup, because all the guns across cannot, they don't have enough penetration to really harm me. Looking at uh, 259. That would have been scary. I guess it's fine, though. That gun can overmatch our Under Armour. Okay. What do we got? Carnivon Action X. What do we have in the hill? Borask, Borask, M56. There's no way that I can turn around right now without super risking myself. So far, getting some pretty decent assist here. I'm actually going to go ahead and back up and peek right here, see if we can provide some view range. And yes, I am exposing my ammo rack. Look at that. Assist is going to be racking up. There we go. Sometimes making a little bit of a different pull and push, honestly. I think I'm going to back up and blind fire that bush. Because of that ISU still might be there. Let's go ahead and rotate the turret here. Pop that premium consumable, give us some better view range. And now, if I had a better crew on this tank, of course, my match would be a lot better. I'd be able to pull in, have a faster reload, have better DPM, have a lot of better things going on. But during the time that you're training crews, it's always best to take things a little bit slow. Not so slow that, you know, match is going to end up like this to a point where it's kind of like a snail's pace and no one is really doing anything to um, anyone because there's just nothing to do, really. It's more like if you're capable of supporting your team and playing with one another and then rotating up with the group it's always good to kind of give people who are wanting to play aggressively their space for instance i'm pulling way too far away that i'm now losing the assist coming in from behind me so my la the last thing that i want to do is leave these guys completely undefended so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a call out saying that i'm ready to uh, push up so ready to attack let's see if they want to pull in behind me if these guys get the call out Right there, we see that one of them is rotating. I'm going to go ahead and say, on my way. Because now I'm pushing up. We'll see if he comes with. And cover me. Let's actually go ahead and mark the map right there on the left side. There we go. Razor gun, cover a hatch. But now everyone knows that there are three tanks right here, so that's good. 
Let's give these guys a taste of the uh, VK's frontal armor. I don't want to pull in, but I know Dragon is going to be right there. Let's block our turret. Block our block our hatch, not our turret. Okay. So far, so good. And I mean, reload, it's not all about the reload. I mean, there's moments that it can be, but I just don't see a point in really caring about it too much. Just because if you're capable of locking down a position, utilizing what armor you do have to hold an area and just prevent people from pushing up into it. That's all that matters, because occasionally you're going to get a shot out, you're going to be able to get those penetrations off, you're going to be able to do as much damage as you can, and even getting the assist. Currently, we're only rocking three perks, and we're up to 5,000 combined right now, and this is going to be a win. Uh, those Skoda T-56s are still together, it's time for me to rotate. Hopefully the Borasks can make it back in time. Or they might try to double up on the base. Uh, more than likely, we're just going to say defend the base. And I'm going to take a year and a half to rotate back with my 30. That's a pop top. Alrighty. Starting to get a little bit close back into it. There we go. Let's go to 56. I can start M56. Actually, let's say this guy to drop. Can you drop? Let's see if this guy's willing to do a drop. Let's actually back up a little bit and try and get a little bit of a bush in the way. Don't aim at him. Take your time. Oh, sad face. But there's no way that he's going to be able to do anything else. He misses his next shell. 56. I am so sorry. I should have been able to pin that. Let's guarantee this. Let's back off a little bit, pull back up, 442. Affirmative. Hey, how they changed that. I'm still used to the uh, pre-6.0 version that they had of that. Which kind of blows me away that I'm still used to the oldest one. Because it, it's muscle memory that never goes away. And that's all that is. So, Luck Clan, Predator, you are going to get overwhelmed by a full health Borask. And a M56 that... Uh, risk their hit points, and I'm happy I was able to keep them alive. Other than that, it's looking to be a good game. So, sure, we did not take MVP. That is a tier 7. They do get a 10% bonus for every single tier that they're going against higher, which is probably one of the best reasons why I would say some of the best crew trainers in the game are actually tier 7 that have decent penetration. Tier 8s can be beneficial because there's a larger variety. You can find something that you can get comfortable inside of and rock it out there. Um, Mark of Excellence, 82.47. Cool-headed first-class mastery badge. Not bad for not having a few range. Still wall, guaranteed with the 5,000 that I had blocked. And as you can see there, a little bit of a difference in the experience. One more shot, and I would have been able to you know, beat the uh, M56, but it is what it is. I personally think lower tiers should have that advantage of the experience bonus every single match that you play in, just because that's what's going to be making the biggest difference for those lower tiers and the amount of experience that they're going to be gaining. Um, I actually want to talk about a couple of crews and then give you guys a few ideas on how to train a crew starting off, rotate them into some plays, and then kind of just ways to go at it. You already have an idea on how I start off a crew instead of a heavy tank, but let's go ahead and jump into how I do my lights and how I do my medium crews. Most of the time, my light-styled crews actually kind of jump into tank destroyer category depending on the style of a TD. I think that one of the best examples I can show off first would actually be a medium tank to light tank crew that I use. Uh, this tank, I do use it on light tanks, which there's a perk that's not beneficial on a light tank at all called silent driving. Thing is, light tanks don't need to use all nine perk slots to be effective light tanks. For instance, a light tank can probably get away with, I don't know, seven perks, six perks, if you really wanted to. So let's go ahead, blow some gold, and then let's build this tank to how I would actually set it up for a light tank. So if you plan on doing passive scouting, or even going after a little bit of active scouting, reloads are not what matter inside of your light tank. The things that matter the most inside of a light tank is going to be concealment combined with the ability to relocate and the ability to actually see targets across the way. 
So, born leader, sixth sense, track mechanic, situational awareness, camouflage expertise. The last four perks that you can go for on this tank is going to be Mark Target. Along with Mark Target, you can probably go after Muffled Shot. Now, I've heard a lot of people say that Muffled Shot it only benefits like one meter. thing is, is that it's towards your shooting camouflage factor. One thing that can give you guys an idea on how your shooting camouflage factor actually applies is take a look at the image that you see on screen. There's a bush around this. There's a muzzle with a little bit of smoke coming out of it. This is best used when firing from behind tree lines or shooting behind bushes. The advantage that this gives can be around a 50 meter advantage on your shots to even a 100 meter advantage depending on the caliber of the round that you fire down range. Clutch braking can be an absolutely necessary one depending on the light tank that you have. And for instance, the French, they really do like clutch braking along with off-road driving. Combining these two on a light tank makes it to where you're extremely mobile and capable of getting around really fast especially the off-road driving not a lot of people think about this but even if your terrain resistance is at one the lower it gets the more consistent your power to weight stays and it allows you allows you to use the full 100 percent of it not to mention some light tanks are going to be jumping into that 2.8 to even a 2.0 category in soft terrain which is going to heavily slow you down so off-road driving in my opinion can be essential depending on your play style inside of your light tanks Comms Technician is another perk that could be beneficial on a light tank, but in all honesty, a lot of tier 8s benefit from 700 to 600 meters of effective radio range. Um, I would say if you're going to be doing it inside lower tiers, for instance, tier 6, tier 7, this perk might actually be extremely beneficial inside of the lower tier categories if you want to throw this on, because a lot of those tanks usually have like 450 to like 530 to maybe at the most... 685 which is a decent amount but the for instance the light tanks that you throw this on if they have below 600 i would say comms technician would be absolutely amazing to throw on them final for light tanks green thumb now here's a question i have for you how many maps in this game are you actually capable of using bushes for instance sand river um el haloof i mean you can drive down inside the bowl and utilize the bushes down there extremely well but there's a lot of maps in game that i don't find green thumb to be fully universal and it starts to lack it's really a situational perk and you can be equipping something that would be far much better on your light tanks for instance let's say that you enjoy your british tanks i would actually say fire prevention because me and my sin lack i love my sin lack but boy does it get set on fire a lot Back to a four refresh, let's go ahead and set up a medium tank crew. We're going to start off with the first four and then start to add on after that. So starting off, we get the three basic perks. We have Sixth Sense, Born Leader, Track Mechanic. But on top of that, we're going to be taking Silent Driving. Depending on the medium that you have, your still concealment is going to be pretty decent if you want to use a camouflage net to try and stay concealed. Um, but personally for medium tanks, I do recommend taking Silent Driving because mediums actually benefit the most from silent driving they had the biggest increase we're talking like 50 meter advantages in some of them we're talking 40 meter advantages in some of them and then tds also benefit from this quite a bit but tds the benefit is not as big it's usually in the range of a 30 meter to a 40 meter bump up on some of them and a couple of them actually hitting in the ranges of 20 to uh 15 depending on the td that you are talking about and looking into doing this with snapshot this can be talked about for heavy tanks, it can be talked about for light tanks, basically everything that you can look at. Um, one of the best ways to know that Snapshot is going to be extremely useful is actually based upon accuracy during turret rotation. So let's take the 777 for example. Accuracy during rotation is 1.41. This right here is a pretty high, um, really high uh, accuracy during turret rotation. It's not exactly the greatest, but it's it's a decent amount. Uh, there's much out there where that's far worse so i would say if this is above let's say 1.5 or even right at 1.4 snapshot could be extremely beneficial to put onto it especially inside of medium tanks so for instance run and gun can be just as beneficial along with vertical stabilizers for instance let's say that you're playing a tank that does have that bad accuracy vertical stabilizers can help make up that difference until you actually unlock both of these perks if you're going to be going for a little bit of an accuracy build primarily run and gun is beneficial on medium tanks 
and I would say some light tanks, but not all light tanks. A lot of light tanks have got very good accuracy during movement, unless you're talking about the T100 LT. That one would probably be the worst out of the bunch. But Snapshot, in my opinion, is kind of a must-have on a lot of heavy tanks and a lot of turreted tank destroyers, because it's going to help keep your bloom in as you rotate your turret. Steady Aim is a perk that if your accuracy on a tank is at, let's say, 0.36, you're probably not going to need it. Anything above 0.36, however, you might want to consider taking steady aim on it. So another perk that I'd recommend for mediums is take a look at your terrain resistance, take a look at your power to weight on your medium tank, and think about, do you need off-road driving to help benefit on that medium terrain and the soft terrain? This is a perk, in my opinion, that is a must-have almost on every single crew, depending on terrain resistance. Not all light tanks are going to benefit from it. A lot of medium tanks will benefit heavily from off-road driving, and a lot of heavy tanks, well, heavy tanks in general, should have off-road driving to begin with. Another thing I could talk about is Gunsmith. Do you guys feel a use for Gunsmith? Um, due to the fact that we have consumables that recharge in 60 seconds, which is extremely fast, 90 seconds for PC re um, recharges, I kind of feel like Gunsmith is not exactly needed, and you can just completely skip over this one. Uh, up next, let's actually say Deadeye. Deadeye is decent as long as, well, you know what? That's a lie. I, I about said something that could have been false. Deadeye is amazing on autoloaders. If you're going to be using an autoloader, Deadeye is absolutely fantastic to throw on. Um, for instance, if you're using single shots, um, Deadeye can be beneficial to kind of help improve the chances of hitting an ammo rack, taking out a crew member if you know where they're located inside of a tank. I mean, drive ports, driver's hatches, or driver's hatches, you know where those are. You throw a high explosive up top, and the module damage is going to be doing the damage either way. One perk I can recommend to completely stay away from, and act like it does not exist, because by the time you're done trading your crew, if you are free to play, this perk causes you to do a complete reset on a crew. Born, well, quick learner. 10% increase to commander XP earned from battle. Prior... Before update 6.0, you were capable of removing perks and changing them out for 10 gold. However, with the current way the game is built, respec, I have to pay 40 gold to remove 4 perks. I cannot come over to a single perk and tap Y on it to take it off by itself. You have to pay the entire price of the crew to remove a perk. Last stand. This is a perk that I thought to myself was absolutely amazing to have on a lot of tanks. 25% increase to crew performance when under 10% HP. For instance, on light tanks, this was actually a 25% increase to your view range, to your reload, to everything that the tank had to offer, including repair time. This was amazing. But due to a lot of changes inside the matchmaker as of recent, I would say as of right now, this perk is not worth taking because of AT, AVREs, a lot of HE spam inside of the lower tiers, and just extremely difficult. Let's say you're playing tier 7s, this perk could be beneficial on some light tanks or even some tier 6s. This perk can make a big difference inside of your matchups. For instance, if you have a 4 second reload and this perk goes off, you now have a 3 second reload. Adrenaline Rush, I find this to be not as beneficial as last stand. Adrenaline rush, on the other hand, if you combine both of these, you're looking at a 40% increase to your reload speed, and that does make quite a big difference, but that means you're taking up two slots on your crew for a chance. I've been asked before, what is the advantage of Iron Mace? Well, let's talk about the rounds, for instance. APCR has got some of the worst penetration falloff in the game. AP, on the other hand, it, it's a lot uh, less of an effect, and heat does not change no matter the distance. Along with that, HE does not change no matter the distance. So, if you're going to be using Iron Mace, this perk is primarily beneficial on tanks that have AP standard and APCR premium, or even if it's a double APCR loadout. For instance, one of the comparisons I can give is the Tier 8 Chieftain T95. Uh, probably one of the worst tier 8s in the game, but it's the best comparison I can give. Due to the fact that it has such low penetration, this perk would be highly beneficial to throw on that tank. Trick driving, 30% um, reduction in fall damage. I don't see much of a use. Um, rollover recovery, learn how to drive. That's it. Supply conversion, uh, this is a perk I personally have not used. 
Makes all of your consumables recharge in 51 seconds rather than 60. I had to do a little bit of math. I kind of got lost on it because I've never used it before. Is a nine second advantage really worth it, especially if it's taking up an entire slot inside of your skills? I mean, if you're using a light tank, this could be beneficial. If you're using a medium tank, I don't see much of a use. Light tanks, I see the most. Actually, I, I see the absolute most coming out of light tanks because, as I mentioned, you don't fully utilize everything in the game for your advantage whenever you're using a light tank. Supply conversion can make a big advantage whenever it comes down to it. Now that I think about it, a nine second advantage means that every single 51 seconds, you're capable of boosting your view range by an additional 15% towards your crew. And the total math that it adds up to, I'm not 100% what it's going to be jumping up to, but for some crews, for the M48 Patton, for instance, you might benefit up to 589, maybe even past that. And if you team, team that up with last stand, um... Yeah, like 640. There's no one at 445 meters that can actually uh, stay concealed whenever you have last stand going off and you're using an active consumable. Pain tolerance. This is a perk that has been talked about a little bit. I do not find much of a use for this due to the fact that we have rechargeable consumables. If anything, you can drop this and not even think about it. General mechanic is a 10% increase to all repair speeds and damage modules. So basically just repair speed in general. Uh, this one is nice. It's a lot better than will mechanic. This is just a gimmick trait in my opinion, completely useless. It should have been connected to the track mechanic, making your crews actually usable or if you're not having them on a willed light tank, but general mechanic can be useful depending if you're going for a repair build and you want to play extremely aggressive inside, let's say an E100 for instance. Firefighting. Well, 10% increase to uh, fire exhaust speed. Personally, I would say fire prevention would be much better to throw on there rather than firefighting. Safe stowage. Primarily beneficial over in a lot of British tanks. Um, mediums, heavies. It's kind of the all-round factor in all honesty because they really like to get emerect in their lower plates. Including the, uh, let's say, T27 General. The uh, Czechoslovakian Tier 8 Premium. Three-round autoloader. Its emerect is located right underneath the turret on both sides. So, ouch. Armor Angling. This is a perk that, well, 5% decrease to damage received. Is that beneficial? When AVREs can high roll for 1600, uh, not to mention if it's a low enough tier, this is a benefit of one damage. Knocked off their gun. Still not including the fact that they have 25% rolls. Uh, 20, it's a 2020 roll, I believe, right now, where it's 20 high, 20 low. So keep that in mind if you plan on using Armor Angling. I do not see a use for this perk. I used it in the very beginning, and I kind of felt like it was a useless perk to begin with. Controlled Impact. This perk is beneficial in any tank above 80 tons. So, depending on your tank, I'd say look it up and consider using Controlled Impact. That's about it. Equipment-wise, well, <laughs> I guess we're going over crews and equipment and training guides and really trying to help you guys out as much as I can here. Um... Advanced repair system is something that I would recommend if you do not have access to a whole ax, you know, a whole plethora of crews and perks and abilities. Um, I enjoy using advanced repair systems. And actually, quite a few tanks. Uh, Spa liner. I still have not tested the uh, explosive defense on this for quite some time, or the ramming. Uh, crew survival rate. I do know that the crew survival rate inside this is a big difference. So. Uh, I guess if you want your crew to survive longer, I'll have to do some more testing on that one. Uh, optics, big help. It's assist. If you can get the assist, that's what matters. Not just that. Every single target that you spot for yourself, and this is something that I really want you guys to know, every single target that you can spot for yourself, you get 100% of the experience. However, if there's a light tank in front of you that has that spot, you only get half the XP for the shot. Sure, you're still getting the damage, you're still getting experience from it. It doesn't mean don't shoot the target because you're not close enough. There's moments that staying back and letting your light tanks and letting some of your medium tanks pull up and do the scouting for you is going to be far much better and much more beneficial for the team and the longevity of the match than just rushing in to try and get that maximum experience. The longer you survive, the more opportunity that you have. Camouflage net, advanced concealment now, uh, used to be a perk that, well, used to be a piece of equipment that required you to sit in a spot for a very, about three seconds before it was activated. Now it's permanently activated, and in my opinion, kind of a bane of existence on the game right now because it's causing light tanks to have ex crazy amounts of concealment and a lot of TDs having 
overwhelming concealment, even on the move. So, advanced concealment, it's highly beneficial on your TDs, depending on their still concealment. As long as it is below 350, or even in the range of 375 still concealment, um, the moment that you put this on, that concealment might be hitting, let's say, like 313, and at the most extreme end of things, 201, even down to 190, depending on the tank. Um, for instance, testing that is done inside of the E70, not the E75, the T25, the Tier 7 German tank destroyer, that tank actually goes off of an older camo system where it has better concealment when firing. And um, it's a tank that if you try to use it for testing purposes, a lot of the results that you're going to get are going to end up wrong because it's based upon old mechanics. It's a premium tank. They have not readjusted it in years. And that's just something I wanted to share with you guys. Don't If you're going to do this on your own, you want to test on your own, do not use the E25. Yes, it is the E25, the Tier 7. I haven't played the tank in such a long time. Advanced suspension, track durability. This is a perk that's actually very specific to some tanks. There's a lot of tanks, there's a lot of equipment in game. Um, there's a lot of them that have changed. For instance, there used to be some tier threes that had some really weird ones that was uh where track durability and repair speeds were amplified by a certain amount. But track durability plus 50%, damage from environmental collisions minus 50%, improved ventilation. It's not required, but it's nice to have. Advanced loader. Um, advanced gun lane drive, 12% to aiming speed. I would say any tank that's above three seconds of aim time, this can be extremely beneficial to throw on. Um, advanced armor, it's just like the perks, perk armor angling. It's completely useless. If you block around, that's the way that you want to play. Putting these on, it's not going to make you immortal. You're better off trying to actually ricochet than just taking a hit because you want to take a hit. Gun stabilizer, we've already gone over it. It works the same way as... Um, snapshot and running gun and steady aim but it doesn't apply permanent accuracy like it used to which in my opinion this is actually a better version of it than a permanent increase to accuracy overall because it means that tanks that can equip it now don't benefit from it they don't benefit from a solid accuracy increase that means for instance like the e4 or the um, e3 that's unable to equip these they're not at a disadvantage because there's tanks that can equip it a 20 percent flat bonus Instead, it's vehicle movement, accuracy, and turret rotation. Uh, reinforced fuel tanks, I don't see this being useful in the slightest. You're better off with toolbox. We have recharging consumables. Don't see a big problem with it. Reinforced ammo rack, we have a perk that gives you 25%. Don't see a use for that. Traction system, depending on your power to weight, this can be beneficial. Combining it with off-road driving and uh, clutch braking, traction system can be absolutely amazing depending on your power to weight. Advanced power terrain. This is one that if you combine it with off-road driving, clutch braking, hmm, born leader, hmm, there's quite a few more on that list, and, oh, I guess, situational awareness. Now, you may be wondering, why view range? Well, that increase to your max horsepower allows you to get up hills faster, it allows you to lo locate around the map a lot quicker, and actually able to utilize your view range. Advanced reload. You know what? I'm just going to say this. If you're going to be using advanced reload, it's going to primarily be on tanks that have at least a 13 plus second reload time. That way you can utilize your high explosive penetration, your premium rounds. You must have heat. Keep in mind, if you do not have heat, I do not see a use for this. Unless you have a crap ton of HE penetration. And you're going to be switching back and forth between... AP and high explosive and using it that way. Other than that, you guys, this has been super long, um, 44 minutes and we're not even, I mean, we're really close to being done. I'm sorry for the amount of time this is taking, but it is what it is. Um, last but not least, one of the dumbest things that the game ever did outline target show penetration chance, enhanced target info. This fourth equipment slot, which was added at the release of Update 6.0, was supposed to be a benefit, but instead it became a hindrance on the game and caused a lot of people and a lot of new players to not realize that this is actually an in-game mechanic. This is not something that is a piece of equipment. Taking this off, I find you to be the most useless teammate in the game. I'm sorry for any of you that don't use this. This is a piece of equipment that if you take it off, you do not benefit. You do not see outlines behind trees. You do not see outlines behind bushes. 
and it just causes a lot of problems. You're not able to see the weak spots. You're not able to see your target indicator telling you that you are capable of penetrating whenever it glows bright red. Don't trust it, by the way. It lies a lot, and it lies with confidence. Um, yeah, I'd say that's about it. That took a while. Now, I know. We've been here a minute, and uh, my voice to myself has given me a, a headache as well. I'm so sorry that my voice is not more lavishing and enjoyable for times. But this is something that I've been wanting to do for quite some time, going over the perks, going over the benefits, crew builds, some ideas. If you guys have any questions, leave them down in the comments. I'll try my best to get back to you to answer them. Or if you have your own suggestions on the ways that you like to train your crews, it's not all about the experience increase. It does make a big difference. Don't get me wrong. If you can get experience increase and you can perform well inside those tanks, prompts to you. Crew training, on the other hand, is not based upon a crew's ability to train a crew. It's the ability of the tank that you feel comfortable inside of. You know, and that's something that not a lot of people realize. A lot of people will, they'll be playing with the nine perk crew for the entire time that they're playing a certain tank whenever they're really good inside that tank and they just want all the advantages that they can get yet they have some seven perk and five perk crews that just don't have what they need and you can throw those crews on that tank rework them a little bit to kind of find that comfort zone yes your your reload's going to get sacrificed but as you can tell from the gameplay i showed off i mean don't get me wrong i'm kind of in, in two super heavies and it's all about the armor and not really pushing up and relying on the team behind you a little bit but the effect it has is a lot more the more crews that you have the more ability you have to transfer them around the less gold that you're going to be spending speaking of which i totally forgot what crew perks were on my camo crew for my bat chat and my borask i'm gonna have to redo that again because i'm a muppet and i completely forgot about it already i think i took a screenshot I think I did. Other than that, you guys, it was fantastic. Thanks for being here. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. Seriously, leave a like. This took a lot of time and a lot of planning. And actually, a little bit of a script. You can't see it, but a little bit of a script. I put some effort into this. The entire reason why I didn't upload a video last night, I wanted to make sure that today went well. Um, the matches were live. I played those live just because that's kind of how this little thing is going. Um, more than likely, starting back up on Monday will be the times that we're going to jump back into it. Other than that, you guys, thank you for being here. This is long. No point in monologuing.